Welcome back everyone to Uplifts at Home. <laughs> I'm Catherine Mokler and joining me this week is Marina Restrepo, a well-known Catholic international speaker and you can check out his book From Darkness Into Light. Marina will speak about how we as Catholics can be a voices of righteousness for the unborn in the fight against abortion and to help women. So Marino, it's great to have you here at home. <laughs> I know you've been busy speaking at various churches across Scotland. One of the major questions now I'm going to ask you is, why do you think we have abortion on demand, really, in this country? I think uh, this is uh, one of the signs of uh, the times we are living where life is not any longer an issue. Life is not important. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, people are so drowned into materialism that uh, the human side of this life of ours becomes just another thing. It's just not life itself, but it is something we have available and we use it just as we use everything else. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, life is another article of consume. Mm, to consume. Well it's said. sad, you know, because yeah, it's devastating. because it, people change friends and people change mm. relationships like changing clothes. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, so there is no values, there is no morals uh, about uh, our hum our humanness. Mm. And and then when you lose the the sight of of the human reality of life, then you have no no worries about what you could do with that particular life. If you have, uh, if you marry and uh, you're not comfortable anymore with your marriage, mm -hmm. then you just break, break up the marriage and go. And same thing with a pregnancy. So you're pregnant and it's not convenient to you. It's going to make your life difficult. You just get rid of the baby. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the way we deal with things in this civilization. Yeah, it's so true. We see a lot of it at SPUC. And many people are, especially Catholics, actually, are not seeing the spiritual aspect of uh, abortion. Um, they're not viewing it uh, through the lens of evil versus good. And so they're normalizing the demonic activity of abortion. Um, many are unaware that they're even doing it. Um, but this warfare is real. Can you tell Catholics and those who are watching you know more about this yes um, I think that uh, if you do have a true Catholic faith and you have been uh, uh, taught uh, the mysteries of the faith which is the Spirit of God in in our religion that is not simply a religion it is a revelation of a God that is alive that is real and that uh, has given us life and therefore we need to understand that there is good and evil that there are two spirits that run this life and uh, we have to define ourselves and decide in which side are we on do we belong to evil or we belong to uh, to good and uh, this is a decision each one of us has to take yeah. if whether we are good or we are not and and this is a spiritual Mm -hmm. And so decisions like uh, abortion, for example, yeah. is a decision of being of the darkness where life is not important. Mm -hmm. And so we have to decide who we are, but it is an, a spiritual battle mm -hmm. because uh, if you go against goodness, then you have an enemy that is constantly looking to destroy you, mm -hmm. you know, looking to stop you, looking to disrupt your life in whichever way is, mm -hmm. is possible to disrupt mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a battle. It's a battle indeed and I think there's a lot of Catholics who may remain silent and then that's where evil is tolerated because they're remaining silent for the unborn and for w women especially vulnerable women but what can Catholics do to help protect the sanctity of human life from the moment of conception to the natural death? I think we should voice our not opinions, because opinions is a very weak way of expressing it, but to voice our faith, you know, to voice our beliefs, that we 
we know that uh, destroying life is a crime, you know, mm. and that we know that uh, destroying life is a killing, see, and, and we have to present this like it is. Yeah. It, it cannot be presented just from a scientific uh, angle, uh, because then you justify the certain states of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You have to present it from the conception moment where the spirit actually mm -hmm. touches the flesh and becomes a human being. Mm -hmm. And you have to t tell people, listen, uh, the moment of conception is the moment of life. Yeah. It's, not, uh, it's not anywhere later or anything else. Mm -hmm. It's the moment of life. And, and we have to respect that. We cannot touch it. And we have to speak like that. Mm -hmm. It's the only way we can defend it. Because if you go into a different area of trying to deal with this matter, then you dilute uh, the, the right of life and then you give a space where they kill. Mm. See, that space is the killing space. Yeah. You have to begin from where it belongs, you know, from the moment of conception and say life is there and you cannot touch it. Mm -hmm. And you have to speak like this everywhere you go. And I've heard some people now they may, you know they find that maybe difficult. They'll say, you know, I use the term comfy Christianity. They don't want to ruffle any feathers, and they maybe want to prefer to talk about other mainstream topics such as sport or um, football before they talk about Christ or the unborn. And there's nothing wrong with football. There's nothing wrong with these sports. These are great things. How, however, I, you know, from my observation, we seem to be doing, especially in Scotland, a lot more promoting and talking about sports. Um, you know prayers for certain sports aspects which is fine but we neglect the most vulnerable which is the unborn what would you say to some uh, Catholic or somebody who's watching that's you know at home going oh I don't know Marino I'm a bit nervous about talking about the unborn uh, from my faith aspect um, what would you say to that I would say we have to be very clear about human respect and the fear of God Mm -hmm. Those two things are very different. Uh, a lot of parents don't talk to the children about God because they don't want to lose their friendship because they yeah. say the youth is not interested in God so why should I bring religion into their lives? They are going to come up, up after me, yeah. against me. And this is the, beast, the first big mistake. We should always testify. Uh, obviously we have to learn how to deliver the truth with charity and yes. compassion and also with uh, intelligence L like the word says we have to be astute as the serpents and humble as the dove mm -hmm. so we have to know how to d deliver mm -hmm. these truths but we do have to deliver them we cannot go for human respect and be shy mm -hmm. and be afraid that we are going to lose something if we express the truth of this matter so it's very important not to go by human respect, mm. though we respect humans, yes. but we have to go by the fear of God, which yeah. is to obey the law of God. Yes, instead of the fear of man, as they yes. say. Um, what would you say to bishops or priests who are maybe watching this and are fearful to talk about abortion in their parish um, in case they alienate women who've had abortions in their congregation, let's say, what would you say to them? I would say that uh, priesthood is a moment in eternity mm. and they will have a day with God. So I guess the greatest responsibility of a priest, be a bishop in whichever level of hierarchy a priest is, is to bring God to people. Mm. And if you as a priest are not bringing God to people, but as is bringing human respect to people, accommodating mm -hmm. to humans' expectations. You are not bringing God to people, and then you you are going to have a big problem with God when you see Him. Mm. So, if you had a message for those people watching out there who may be pro-abortion and Christian, mm -hmm. what would you say to them? They're watching well, the word like of God is clear about that. It says you cannot serve two lords. Mm -hmm. See, it's like you are if you are married and you have a lover. Mm -hmm. So you are not faithful. Yeah. See, if you are a Christian and you do not do, do not protect and respect life, mm -hmm. you are not respecting God. So mm -hmm. therefore, you are not really a Christian. Mm 
Mm. So Marino, um, some women, um, feminists say that you can't have an opinion on abortion because you're a man, you don't have a uterus. So what would you say to them? Uh, I would say that uh, that is absolutely ridiculous because a conception couldn't happen if uh, we don't have a man and a woman. So how could the man be out of this, uh, of this uh, concept of uh, being uh, aware of life when you are part of that life? Mm. See, life wouldn't take place if, if we are not involved too, you know, yeah. if a man is not involved. And so how couldn't I talk about something I am part of? Thanks very much, Marino, for joining us on Off Lifts at Home. <laughs> and it was a pleasure speaking with you. And I know you have a few more talks to give around churches in Scotland. So all the best with that. And it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. <laughs>